You're listening to In the Books, a period drama podcast hosted by us. I'm Michelle. I live in the States. You can find me at Musings on Instagram and Twitter, at least for now. <laughs> I am Rita. I live in England. I'm at Annoying Rita on Instagram and Twitter. And welcome to our third episode in our series of podcasts on the Empress slash Dikaiserin in its original tongue. I'm sorry to all the German speaking listeners. Uh, um, but before we dive into a lengthy recap, and I mean lengthy, I have an important announcement to make. Drum roll, please, Michelle. Okay, that's pretty pathetic, but that's that's all I you, got, girl. You get the impression, folks. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The Empress has been adapted into a book. Oh, not really news because it been out since september but oh. <laughs> i only found out about it yesterday so <laughs> news <laughs> now our usual forte over here at in the books is to analyze the adaptation from book to screen of our favorite novels this book is a little different because it's a novelization of the empress scripts into a standalone novel and realizing this had happened i had to buy a copy <sighs> of course of course you did. Of course. Amazon Next Day Delivery is right there for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michelle and listeners, yes? I shall now propose to you all a book club episode discussing it. Uh, ooh. Ooh, um Probably after the holidays, um, after yeah. we wrap up on the season. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think that'd be great. It'd yeah. be a new twist on what we usually do, which is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. on to the episode. Um, okay. This episode is called The Wedding, and strap on in for a very, very lengthy recap. <laughs> okay, the episode began where the first episode started. Elizabeth approaches the aisle and stands beside Franz as the creepy archbishop begins a prayer. Lord, guide us. I should do this. <laughs> oh, Lord, you are so very big. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Slight Monty Python moment, but um, I'll get back to I thought reality. you would go for Princess Bride, which is my Maui! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we could do either one, but anyhow. Here's what the uh, creepy archbishop had to say. Lord, guide us through the darkness and lead us into the light. Show us who is good and who lusts for evil. Hmm. I have a few suggestions on that score. Mm -hmm. Starting with you, Archbishop <laughs> Bishop. Um, we get close-ups of their respective families, varying reactions as the Archbishop declares them man and wife. <laughs> the newly married couple then leave the cathedral. They are greeted by a jubilant CGI crowd. <laughs> Elizabeth looks overwhelmed at first, but seems to get over her trepidation as she tries to approach her people. This sends the crowd into a frenzy, and they swarm towards their new queen. Ah! Okay, so the gendarmerie springs into action to try and stop a riot, and Franz pulls Elizabeth away. For the record, I am just sort of guessing that they're gendarmerie because it's like a military form of policing which is yeah. like the vibe they were giving, but who, I don't know Austrian Empire <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, so the title sequence is over and the nobility are arriving at the palace for the post-wedding ball, and this includes Polar Bear Chick. Of course. Oh yeah, they can't shake her off. Mm. Despite the fact, or maybe because of the fact, that Franz has made it clear that he wants nothing to do with her, Maximilian, that scamp, has decided to invite her to tonight's ball. What an ass. So the foreign minister interrupts Sophie's preparations for the evening to tell her that the Russian army is amassing soldiers on the Austrian Eastern Front. There are reports of border violations, because Russia's gonna Russia. This <laughs> horrifies Sophie, who declares her friendship with the Tsar over. This yeah. is a clear insult. She decides Franz must be told immediately. Unfortunately, right at that moment, he and Elizabeth are entering the ball. 
as they approach their thrones. The gossip about Elizabeth swells, but she keeps her composure and they both look blissfully happy as they sit down together. Hold on to that feelings, folks. (laughs) (laughs) The court begin to perform a very elaborate dance and Uh, Franz explains they are not allowed to dance until the very end of the evening. It's like passed off as ceremonial, but it's mostly just so the writers can have a really tense waltz later. Um, yeah. Elizabeth cracks a joke about it being cancelled, so he doesn't embarrass them. And he smiles <laughs> fondly at her. It's so cute! Yes! A little banter. Yes. Across the room, Max is as bitter as ever and remarks to his mother <laughs> that the crowd earlier got worked up like dogs in heat over Elizabeth. Sophie <laughs> accuses him of projection and bullseye! Oh, yeah! <laughs> As the very elaborate dance continues, Elizabeth <laughs> spots a woman in the crowd, crowded ballroom staring at her in a very intense manner. Elizabeth asks Franz who the woman is and Franz just noticeably freezes. He does a very <laughs> bad lie about... Oh, I don't know who she is. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth... Ain't no dummy. She knows he's lying, but before she can confront him about it, Sophie pulls Franz away to discuss the problems on the border. We then cut to an anteroom where the ladies-in-waiting all fuss over Elizabeth. Also in the room is Matron and her hair, (laughs) God, her mother, and Helene. Elizabeth decides this is the perfect moment to announce that she wants Helene to stay with her and become the new head of her court. Helene smiles and says she would love to. Matron's hair looks <laughs> horrified. <laughs> it's literally standing on end. Oh my god, that woman. Meanwhile, Franz is in a meeting with his mother, brother, and the foreign minister. Sophie advocates for the use of force against the Russians, but Franz doesn't want to be provoked into a war. Max sticks to form and shrugs off the responsibility of protecting a few Romanian serfs, quote-unquote, yeah. bastard. Instead, he suggested he suggests he use his connections with the French to form an alliance. Franz tells the minister he will make a decision tonight, but in the meantime, he needs to talk to his brother alone. As soon as the door closes, Franz accuses Max of inviting the polar bear chick and flirting with his bride. He is pissed off and tells Max that bringing him back to Vienna was a mistake. Max has the gall to look hurt as he leaves the room. It's literally the consequences of your own actions, my man. So, ain't got nobody to blame but your own damn self. That's for sure. Franz asks Theo to, quote, keep an eye out on the polar bear chick. Theo approaches her at the ball. She asks him who the most powerful man in the room is. He responds with absolute loyalty. The emperor, of course. She observes that even the emperor needs something. Sophie is approached by the head of the gendarmerie who reports that there is growing restlessness in the city. OMG, liberal propaganda is circulating and insurgents are gathering. He wants permission to take decisive action and sophie says that it would look absolutely terrible on the day of a royal wedding sophie's then approached by a matron who is in a flap and complaining about elizabeth choosing her sister as the head of the court fearful that her reign of terror might come to an end matron wants sophie to intervene sophie promises to sort it and then turns to the gendarmerie and tells him that he can do whatever he wants as long as he pardons 50 people in the cells as an imperial gift on the wedding day. <laughs> it's all about PR, baby. Oh, yeah. Spin, spin, spin. Um, Elizabeth and her ladies have re-entered the ballroom. The conversation turns to the horrible conditions of the people living in Vienna. Elizabeth's mother cracks a very awkward joke about starving herself to fit into her dress. <laughs> and Elizabeth visibly cringes. Yeah. Ludovica then spots her husband flirting quite openly with another random woman old enough to be his daughter, and they begin fighting publicly. Already having a bit of a nightmare with her embarrassing family, Elizabeth then spots Polar Bear Chick watching her again from the balcony. 
She asks her ladies in waiting who the hell that woman is, and one of them is stupid enough to let slip about the affair she had with the Emperor. Ugh. Whoops. Lizzie then sneaks off to go confront her husband about that. <laughs> She enters his apartment and sees a light on in one of the rooms, and she follows it. Waiting for her, you guessed it, it's polar bear chick, who begins <laughs> asking her what it feels like to be married. At first, they are quite pleasant to each other, you know, in that icy way that is friendly, Women but sizing not each other friendly, up. yes. <laughs> and polar bear chick even remarks that she knew they would get along. Polar bear I chick. I about it then remarks that everyone at court has their own small role and hers is to see to the entertainment. Elizabeth is firm when she tells her that whatever role she might have had, it's over. Now she is there. Meanwhile, Franz is meeting with Alexander von Bach and two rich assholes he's trying to get to invest in his railway. He explains that he thinks the railway expansion will mean more trade and more prosperity to parts of the empire that feel their living conditions are intolerable. The two men seem uninterested in any of this. They would rather discuss the war and would rather make an investment in troops. Franz loses his patience with them and asks, how would these troops get to the border? How will they get food to them? The eastern border is over a thousand kilometers away. That's 621 miles for all of us American folk out here, okay? <laughs> Thanks, the Rita. It's just absolutely <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> they need this railway for everything. Before he can build on his argument, Elizabeth interrupts, clearly upset. She asks to speak with Franz. He tells her it can wait, and she leaves. <laughs> But the moment having been lost, the two rich assholes declare they are uninterested in helping him on the grounds that, quote, they always get so queasy on trains. <laughs> Aw, pubba boo boo As the door shuts on him, Franz shouts, Shiza! <laughs> Back at the ball, Max tries and fails to flirt with Leontine, who declares it's never worth it <laughs> smart bitch smart <laughs> i like her he then decides to smooth the f french ambassador monsieur de Bocconi. i assume that's how you pronounce it i'm apologizing <laughs> to the french now <laughs> <laughs> they of course discuss the crimean war and the ambassador remarks that france is going to pay a heavy price for peace max unable not to stir up some shit remarks that france's motivations might not be about preserving peace after all, if France and Russia tear each other to pieces, then who will hold sway in Europe? I would suspect Prussia, but they <laughs> seem to be a non-entity in this show's discussion, so please ignore me. Anyway, Max's bullshit seems to make the French ambassador nervous, and he mm. does a little panic. Yes. Sophie meets up with her ex-lover, Prince von Vasa, and they start making on out. Uh, von Vasa says that now that there's a new empress on the scene, Sophie's at liberty, and he wants to run away with her in the morning. I mean, does that sound like something she'd do to you, Von Vasa? Anyway, <laughs> Sophie immediately looks uncomfortable, and her lover notices, pulls away, and remarks that her true love is the Habsburg Empire. But there can only be one empress, he warns her. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, things are going to get interesting. I, I can feel it. Elizabeth goes out into the palace grounds to get a breath of fresh air when suddenly she hears a splash. When she goes to investigate, she finds her father, drunk off his ass, standing in the middle of the palace's ornate fountain. She begs him to please be normal for once. And he derisively says, what does that mean? Are the people in there normal? She tells him that he behaves like a complete ass and calls it freedom. Oh, how the turntables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were having this same conversation about her two episodes ago. He accuses her of having changed and she's like, yeah, duh. But can't you be happy for me? Of course not. He then tells her that her sister loves Franz and that expecting her to stay in the palace and look after her is selfish. 
As this piece of information sinks in, a firework display lights up the sky to heighten the drama of it all. She tells him that she wants him and her mother to leave immediately. She doesn't want them there anymore. Bye. Back <laughs> Bye. Back at the palace, Franz bumps into Prince von Varsa, who congratulates him on his wedding and introduces himself as a friend of his mother. Mm. They get chatting and commiserate over their respective annoying siblings. Van Varsa tells him he can't imagine there's too much animosity between brothers. When they were both little and Max couldn't sleep, Franz sat with him so that the demons wouldn't catch him. Franz is like, wait, what, 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 wait, <laughs> wait, what, why would you know that about me? And Van Varsa tells him his friend, Sophia, told him. Get it yet, Franz? Hmm? Still mm -hmm. potentially not. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Franz then goes into a meeting with the son of one of the investors that blew him off earlier. The son explains that although his father doesn't want to accept it, he now decides what investments and loans their bank makes. And he thinks the railway plan is great and that it's high time that the Industrial Revolution came to the Habsburg. It turns out Polar Bear Chick convinced him that he could trust Franz not to fritter away the money. And just like that, she wanders into the room and starts flirting with the young banker. <laughs> what do you know? She's found a new role at court. And I ain't mad. I ain't mad at this one. Mm -mm. Sophie then enters the room and starts freaking out that Franz is selling out their country for <laughs> a trinket. And starts asking, where did you get this idea? As if Franz isn't capable of thinking up ideas of his own. Mm -hmm. I mean, mother-son tension for days. Yes. Max bids adieu to the French ambassador and manages to kind of maybe start a coup. Well, they both agreed that Austria needs a new head of state. And whoever would that be, I wonder? Hmm. Pretty sure that his brother would consider this treason. So, off with his head. Yes. Elsewhere, Franz is back in the ballroom, waiting to do the final dance with his bride, but she's vanished. To try and mitigate the growing awkwardness, he approaches Elena and they chat. He thanks her for agreeing to stay with Elizabeth for a while. I mean, when did he find out about this anyway? Uh, she uh, seems very much still besotted with him. <laughs> Keep it in your pants, Elena. <laughs> Elizabeth finally arrives back in the palace and we get a fabulous scene between her and Sophie. Noticing that Elizabeth looks unhappy, she offers to make sure the polar bear chick never shows her face in court again. Uh, Elizabeth thanks her, but believes it to be unnecessary. She will just have to suck it up. She then asks Sophie for some advice about whether she is doing the right thing by Helen. Is it selfish to keep her at court? Sophie is gentle, but admits that while her sister is loyal to her, she is still hurt and suggests sending her to Bohemia, away from her awful parents. In listening to Bohemian Rhapsody. Sorry. <laughs> Could have had to do it. Um, Elizabeth agrees and then makes her dramatic entrance back into the ballroom. She looks visibly upset as she approaches Franz and is unable to answer him about what is wrong. As the music starts and their fast waltz begins, Sophie approaches Helena with the news. Intercut with the dance are images of revolutionaries and peasants being brutally attacked across the city. They're punched, they're drowned, they're bludgeoned by a truncheon? Truncheon. Truncheon. What's that? Is that not a thing in America? I suppose all of your police carry guns instead. <laughs> oh, like a, but like a baton or something like that? Y yeah. Okay. But it, like, it, it's like one of the, it starts off quite small and then you swing it out and then it's like oh. microscopic. It's Yow. very sexy. Um, Yow. Okay. Well, ow. Because that would hurt. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and this, this is all happening to them as they're trying to run away. Uh, one guy is even shoved down a flight of stairs. Ah, the romance. <laughs> Just what you want on your wedding night. Uh -huh. um, now brace yourself, guys, because it's <laughs> time for the wedding night. It is here. <laughs> Elizabeth is being prepared for her duty with a very stern lecture. 
from Matron. She wants to make it abundantly clear that no fun must be had <laughs> while conceiving the royal offspring. It's of utmost importance that she remains fully dressed in a hideous nightgown and lies completely still. Uh-huh. For the sanctity of her poor soul. Um, (laughs) Elizabeth enters Franz's bedchamber. He too is dressed in an overly ornate looking nightgown. They make (laughs) quite the pair. Like, honestly. Uh, And to his credit, Franz immediately admits that he lied to her about the fact that he and Polar Bear Chick used to be lovers. Just immediately. Like, first thing, she walks in the room. I lied. <laughs> uh, she, <laughs> My bad. She tells, I lied. Sus, sus. Um, he, uh, she tells him she knows, obviously, and complains about how everyone at court is trying to get into her head. He's like, oh, you're talking about my brother? And warns <laughs> her to stay away from his evil, evil brother, who's undoubtedly the worst culprit of anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Apologies concluded, Elizabeth cracks a joke about being unable to take her nightgown off without going to hell. (laughs) Tension lifted, Franz then lies down on the floor in a similar vein to the scene from episode one. Elizabeth lies next to him and they both seem to relax. Franz promises they'll do this together. We'll see how long that lasts. (laughs) Franz tenderly kisses the palm of her hand and they both fall asleep on the floor. It was so nice. So sweet. Meanwhile, Elaine and her mother and father are in a carriage hurtling away from the palace at speed. They have already been kicked out. Ludvika and her husband, both hurt by their sissy's actions, seem to bond over the rejection. Helene, through her tears, tells them this is her journey now, in a seeming acceptance of their different paths back at the palace. And Sophie is lying in her bed looking pissed off. Matron approaches her and tells her that it's for the best that Prince von Varsa has left because he caused so much trouble in the past. That sounds like a juicy backstory if I've ever heard one. Pretty cool. Pretty Uh cool. Pretty cool. Uh (laughs) Um, (laughs) Sophie ignores her and seems sad as she contemplates if he was right. Maybe her time has passed. Matron, seeing an opportunity, attempts to comfort her physically and gets in bed with her. Sophie rejects her. Side eye emoji. Uh Uh-huh. Cut to bird chirping noises. You knew that there had to be some birds involved here. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. I screamed. I was like, birds? Mm -hmm. Birds. This is, this is going down. Not the list. (laughs) (laughs) So bird chirping noises as day breaks over Vienna. Elizabeth watches Franz sleep. They're both still on the floor. That just made all my bones hurt. Um, (laughs) It's very good for your back, apparently, though. So. Oh, God. Then just having to try and get up. <laughs> After getting <laughs> down there? No. no. Uh, it's not a look. Um, anyhow, as he awakens, she drags her fingertips across his face and then eventually down his body. Before too long, well, well, the nightgown okay. of salvation is being thrown aside and the two begin to have sex. Intercut with this is a true buzzkill of a scene where Max approaches and then sits on Franz's throne. He also grips onto Elizabeth's throne and starts imagining she is beside him. It's giving truly psychotic energy, but the implication is that not only is he coming for the crown, he's coming for the empress, too. (sighs) The end. Okay, not a fan of the end. That really ruined my vibes. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, what was your overall opinion on the episode? Oh, uh, I liked it. Um, you know, you know, they they called it the wedding, but I think we had what maybe uh two minutes tops of an actual wedding. You want to see the whole ceremony? No, 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 no. Uh, uh-uh. uh, no, no. But it, I just found it interesting. It was like, oh, the wedding, and then basically it should have been uh the after party. Oh, uh, the, <laughs> the endless bull. Yeah. Yeah, because that's where all the action was happening. Mm. Um, but uh, I I enjoyed it, um, and the the sex scene at the end was I thought that was really lovely. I love how like I think having it shot at um, morning made it like really soft and glowy and like yeah. nice. It was 
yeah. obviously fantastic metaphorically for all the bad shit they've put <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true and you know i think i was noticing just how dark and yeah. cool the the temperature of the scenes that we were seeing in the first part of the episode um, as someone who has to screenshot the episode to make posts on instagram uh-huh. like Everything is a dark blue tone, <laughs> like even the day scenes. And then that scene, by contrast, was like very yellow, yes. like glowy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was just like, okay, yeah, the sun is out. It's a new day. Let's get, let's go. Let's get it on. <laughs> Bouncy, go, wow, wow. Nightgown, you go sleep over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think thought it was a really really strong episode actually yeah. the mm-hmm. show has a way of like ratcheting up tension and i just felt like i was inside a pressure c- cooker watching it for the mm-hmm. first time and the building of tension between like it was like a layer cake of just like shitty thing upon shitty thing upon <laughs> shitty thing and then by the time you get to Elizabeth and Franz whirling around the ballroom, it was like peak drama. Yeah. The emotions were all over a place. And you were just like, oh, I feel terrible. And then the scene in his uh, apartments came and it was just like, oh, I feel so much relief. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, thank God. They're just alone together and they can <laughs> just talk like normal people. <laughs> yeah. So it's really impressive. I feel like the we really underestimate how good the writing is to create oh, yeah so much drama out of just very little <laughs> yeah just you know when we're talking about kind of the the mood um and how they n- managed and um kind of navigated the mood uh for the episode the dance oh i felt threatened <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I felt like this was the this was just so not appropriate for a wedding. <laughs> it's like are you trying to scare her to death? I think there's always something a little bit sinister about interpretive dance and that has always been my opinion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's too expressive. <laughs> there's too much coming at me. But I thought it was like a great a representation of like the court and yes. the, at first you're like oh this is so beautiful and synchronized and everyone's in their place and then it got real dark yeah and you were scared yeah. and that's probably how elizabeth was feeling so mm-hmm. congrats um, yeah. you made me scared yeah you all y'all did it <laughs> it was y'all beautifully it. done though yeah well um, well well done storylines elizabeth and franz yeah, I'm I'm too, I'm too invested in this relationship. <sighs> I think it's probably a bad move on my part, so I, I desperately want them to work out because yeah. like so many so many things <sighs> are trying to get them to not love each other and I just won't accept it. Um mm-hmm. but I, I, I ship it. Yeah. These actors have so much chemistry. Yeah, they do. Oh my god. Yeah, they like, really there's do. Just little, where they just smile at each other and you're yeah. like, oh my god, I can yeah. write an essay about this. <laughs> yeah, they catch one another's eye and it's like, oh! <gasps> they like each other. They like it's each adorable. other so much. Oh, it's just wonderful. Um, and Max, and, ugh. Max is ruining it. Um, I, and I really like that Fran didn't need to be told he he, he fucked up. Uh-huh. Um, it's not that doesn't really tend to happen a lot in romances. Yeah. Usually, you need to yell at a man before he understands. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's like it's really it's really nice to have a relationship where a man knows how to communicate his feelings. Mm-hmm. He just came comes out and says, "You know what? I lied." And I'm sorry. Yeah. And he doesn't make any like shitty excuses. He's just like, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe this is the bar being in hell for men, but I found <laughs> it refreshing. And I think this is a positive sign that they could maybe communicate in the future. Mm-hmm. But I also know that there are three episodes left, so something <sighs> bad is going to happen. 
Yeah, well, at least we have a season two coming. Oh, yeah. More pain. More Just pain. bring it on me. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it's like, I can't believe that we've only got six episodes. Ugh. I feel like we've learned so much about them in the past. Like, we're only halfway through, but I yeah. feel like we know them. Like, mm-hmm. they've been here longer in my life, and I will protect them with my whole entire being. <laughs> No, they the the writers have done an extraordinary job, and the actors, mm. you know, all of the scene work uh, or the sceneries <laughs> that we've seen, all of that kind of stuff. It's just amazing. Ten out of ten would recommend watching this and watching it with the original language German. <laughs> Duh, that's you so were obvious. you were right. You were right. <laughs> Um, when am I wrong? I yeah, don't know it was, anything. <laughs> it was it was really it was really really good. Um, like when you put it on, did it go straight to dubbing? Like why would you? No, it's just it's just what I seem to always pick when I'm listening or hmm. when I'm watching a foreign language film or television show. I put s- subtitles on even when it's in English. Oh yeah, like... me too. <laughs> me too. So do you have dubbing and the subtitles? Like I had the I had the English dubbing and subtitles. Oh. Um but then after last week um <laughs> My having, <rant. laughs> having been uh read the house down, um <laughs> I was like, Okay, fine, I'll listen to it in German. But did you was I right? Did you sort of understand it more than you thought you would? Because I'm always surprised at how much German is. Yeah, I, there were there were several sounding. there were several moments where it was like they're speaking English. Don't <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah, no, that that was a uh, uh, really great improvement, and and it really helped me get even deeper into the show. So and the performances are like oh so good. Damn, yeah. <laughs> They're so amazing. Uh, okay, anyway. speaking of um, amazing acting, or, or I think acting in a role and knowing that you're going to have a ball doing it. Um, Elizabeth's family dynamic. <laughs> I mean, what a mess. Oh my gosh. The mother and father were just in fine form at a very oh, public ball. Yeah. I think I had a bigger problem with her father, though. I just, I love when he was like, "Oh, she gets it from me." I was like, "Yes, yeah, yes, she does." Yeah, though she she has not wandered into the middle of a fountain yet. <laughs> I can imagine her doing it. Oh, it's really unbearable. Get out of the fountain! You're a grown man. Seriously, and Elena, you know, I think that I honestly think that her going uh, back home was really the right decision for her. Um, Me too. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine being with someone who then we split and then they got together with a friend of mine and you would have to see them on a regular basis. Um, Not that she was really with friends. I think, like, the the problem... But she needs time to get over the illusions she had built up in her head and the life she'd planned for herself. Yeah. Um, it's going to be very hard for her to watch mm-hmm. Elizabeth mm-hmm. being the empress she imagined she would be. Yeah. So, like, being... I really liked that Elizabeth was actually, for once in her life, thinking about what is best for someone else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds really mean. I love Elizabeth. But mm-hmm. she's not <laughs> known for her selflessness. Right. And I thought she'd matured from the girl who would ride off on Puck and not think about the consequences. Mm-hmm. She actually was forced to think about things and she like sought out advice and she was like, this is going to be very painful for me personally, but I've got to do the right thing by my sister. Yeah. And I was very impressed with her. Yeah. Um, a lot of character growth um, has happened, but still that's like salt in a wound and it's going to take some time for her to, you know, stop with the feels, um, mm-hmm. you know, and she's young. She is in a fairly powerful position. Yeah. So I think it's just a matter of time before someone comes along who ticks all those boxes for her. And uh, maybe in Bohemia, she'll maybe, maybe, maybe. I think 
being away from her mother and father will be so oh my God. good for her. Yeah. She can maybe develop a personality outside of people pleasing. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, grow. Yes. I liked that Sophie saw that and was like, we'll, we'll send her away. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you, Sophie. Um, what do you think this means for Elizabeth? Because she's going to be very more very much more isolated than before at court she's not going to even have her family there if i were her i'd probably panic a little great opportunity for leontin yes absolutely worm your way in there (laughs) (laughs) you go girl but uh yeah i think that i think that things are going to be getting pretty damn interesting and perhaps not in a good way (laughs) we're gonna be like please can it be more boring (laughs) i can't handle the emotional emotional (sighs) distress um <laughs> speaking of intrigue um the polar bear wearer oh my uh, lord i found her surprisingly compelling this week mm-hmm. um because i think her trying to find a new role for herself at court um and still being useful to the crown was really clever and i appreciate mm-hmm. a smart woman it yeah. really reinforces that this was a period where women had very few paths to power Mm-hmm. especially in such a traditional court. Yeah. Um, her only way to stay relevant was essentially whore herself out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless her. Um, this, in retrospect, cast the previous episode in a new light for me mm-hmm. because she seemed upset about losing Franz as an individual person. But now I'm like, nah, she was losing her status yeah. and her power at court and i think that makes her way more interesting and complicated but also more dangerous yes very much so she's just gonna be allying herself mm-hmm. with anyone who's in power or seeking power mm-hmm. and that might be max pretty soon so yeah. i'm i'm scared i'm very scared yeah i i Don't think fuck with us polar bear chick <laughs> The the minute you saw her, you know, and you saw that the the look in her eye, which was devastation, you know, you knew that it, things weren't going to end well. Oy vey. She's interesting, though. Because yeah. I do, been, like, when she was saying to um, Elizabeth that she knew that, they, that she'd like her and they'd get on, I was like, yeah, I could sort of see that. Mm-hmm. They're both sort of living outside of the societal norms. Like, this is a woman who's chosen not to get married. Um, mm-hmm. She's definitely not the traditional wife and mother figure. Mm-hmm. She's, But then I don't know how, like, if that's actually sustainable. Like, this is a very short-term power play. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, you might want to think about marrying eventually for some security. <laughs> you ain't going to be this hot forever. <laughs> oh god you better work oh gosh well how about our dueling brothers max and franz well i hate max more than ever um yeah max can go sit on a screw and spin i found the scene between them really powerful Mm -hmm. i thought that was such a well-acted scene i appreciated that franz was just very brutal like he doesn't play the games that his brother does yeah and he's like i know you've been flirting with my (laughs) wife (laughs) fuck off (laughs) like don't come around here no more right because i ain't got anything for you um Mm -hmm. but on the other like emotionally i appreciate that i do wonder if he's made a strategic mistake because he's now alienated max further which makes him more dangerous and more of a threat to him. And he might, again, stage a coup with the help of the French. <laughs> oh, my God. What do you think? Oh, man. Um, you know, I think that, that it's good that Franz knows what his brother is capable of mm. and is warning Elizabeth, appro- you know, based on that. Yeah. Honestly... I don't understand why Max is so heavily pursuing this thing with his brother's wife, now wife, when, you know, he probably wanted a hanging for if he was ever caught. 
Actually, no, considering the time period, she'd end up hanging and he'd get away with it. Oh. <laughs> Classic misogyny. <laughs> God, I love that historical misogyny. It is bizarre, though, because you, you make a good point. He just keeps poking the bear and then yeah. being up, forgive the polar bear adjacent pun, but then yeah. being like ups, upset when mm-hmm. Franz reacts like... Like, what did you expect, motherfucker? Yeah. What did you... Like, Franz was just going to be like, yes, keep hitting on my wife. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just... It's a mess. I sounded like a goat just then. Mess. Mess. It's a bit sheep adjacent. Oh, more than. okay. Speaking of love triangles, I <laughs> am now declaring the Sophie von Vasa matron mm-hmm. situation a love triangle. Yep. This is gay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's gay with a capital G-A-Y. And I'm here for it. I, was, I, I, I gasped <laughs> um, when Sophie was like in bed and then the matron tried to get in bed yes. with her. I was like, after the shit you pulled about Elizabeth holding someone's hand <laughs> to shake her hands. <laughs> she's climbing into bed with her and she keeps like in constantly trying to touch her against her will, which is not ch- <laughs> that's not chill. That's not a cool vibe. No. Um but they were lovers in the past. I yeah. suspect that Sophie has now gone cool on her and then got a newer model because there's also that other chick um, who's the head of her household now that she's sort of making flirty eyes with and watching have sex. Mm. That sort of spins this into a new light. Do you think the reason the matron is so intense with Elizabeth is because she's like trying to create another situation? Like the one she has with Sophie. Yeah, another situation. You know, it's it's another one of these kind of Black Widow situations, you know? She's not killing them off yet, but she is <laughs> reaping the benefits of... Like classic toxic situation where you isolate them, mm-hmm. you make them totally dependent on yep. you, and then you become their whole world. Yep. Just yeah. say no, this kids! Is scary. Just say no. Yeah. Just... Also, she's like, how does she think that's going to work on someone like Elizabeth? Who is like, <laughs> I I understand why it would work on Sophie because she does have a respect for tradition mm-hmm. and the rules. Elizabeth don't give a shit. She's not going to be like, yes, thank you for putting me in this nightgown. <laughs> this is fantastic. There was also this moment where uh, she touched Elizabeth's cheek while talking yes. about just lying there. Yes, and I was like. Oh. It's like, what is that about? What? I'm very, like, interested but horrified at the same time, <laughs> you know? Like, like, I would want to sit and watch her therapy. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, things are things are a little weird at the condo, but, you know, take it, you know, one day at a time. Speaking of... Uh, Prince of Vasa and uh, his relationship. Yes. I did some digging because uh, he sounded like he might be real, and of course he is because this is the show that it is. Um, and here are some basic facts about this dude who I don't think actually was Franz's dad, but here we go. <laughs> so he was born in 1799 as the crown prince of Sweden. When he was 10 years old, his father was deposed by a coup sounding familiar, and the family was forced into exile. Uh, His parents had very, very different ideas about how to live their lives now they were exiled and divorced two years later after much fighting. His mother then placed her children under the guardianship of her brother-in-law, Russian Tsar Alexander, Mm -hmm. and then they lived a pretty nomadic life, moving around from household to household. Um... So, von Vasa went on to serve as an officer to the Habsburgs of Austria, and he was made a field marshal lieutenant in the Austrian army in 1836. He married his first cousin, because... Yeah, that's what you do. You, that, you, you're a prince. You've got to do the incest. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. Her yeah. name was 
Princess Louise Amelie of Biden. Uh, they got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> they got divorced in 1843, so almost a decade before the show is set. So unlike Sophie, that man can uh, do what he wants. Yeah. So if he's still married, remember, mm-hmm. everyone remember her husband, because yes. he wasn't there this episode, just vanished. Yeah. The mystery surrounds whether he had an affair with Sophie. I suspect very much fucking yeah. not. Uh, but isn't that fun? Yes. You've got a Swedish prince randomly showing up. <laughs> uh, things back then sure were colourful. Yeah. Maybe, like, they could bond over the loss of power or something. I don't know. Hmm. Um, That's an interesting thought. Sophie's role as the de facto female leadership figure of the family is really being tested at the moment. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She's having a bit of a nightmare and an identity crisis, (laughs) spiralling visibly. And maybe the ghost baby will come back. Who knows? Um... (laughs) How did you How did you know I was I was listening to uh the Jaws soundtrack before we got started on this thing? <laughs> Why would you do that? Did you were you like I need to rack it uh, 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 up the uh, tension? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. How do you think uh Sophie's gonna cope with Elizabeth being the Empress now? Because <sighs> she seemed quite pleased that the people liked her, uh-huh. but um, How long is that going to last? I think that we may get through a honeymoon period uh, where respite of um, the battle between the two empresses initially, but then this situation in, with the Crimean War uh, is heating up to a point that I think um, all pleasantries are going to wind up being uh, basically trashed sometime in the not too distant future. She's definitely seeking trying to seek out someone to blame for mm-hmm. Franz's political beliefs. Why she would think it's Elizabeth whose greatest interest is like <laughs> writing, writing some poetry. poetry. Yes. <laughs> it's like has she said any does she even know there's a war starting <laughs> is another question. Like <laughs> Oh God misplaced anger incoming incoming yeah i really did like their scene together um i thought sophie handled that really well Mm -hmm. and with a lot of care but she was still very honest and i was like oh she can never have had this conversation with her own mother so Mm -mm. maybe this would be a a positive relationship in her life yeah uh but watch it Turn to absolute shit <laughs> by the end of the season. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would not surprise me. Uh, mm. So we've got some politics happening each week, um, but um, I, things seem to be stepped up a little bit right now. Uh, it, it was giving <laughs> me stress. Um, yeah. So the police brutality angle. Gonna be honest, when there was. That shot of that person running away and then the policeman coming al- not the policeman, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But he was like riding up on a horse and he whacked them over the head and they fell to the ground. It was done so perfectly in time with the music uh-huh. that I laughed my head off. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> horrific, but funny. It was timed. Just, yeah. I just loved it. Anyway. Yeah. In real life, I do not love police police brutality, but I just find Sophie's, she makes the wrong choices mm-hmm. over and over again, yeah. like with the police, mm-hmm. like sending out that, the police on the night that they're having this huge fucking ball to celebrate a wedding, yeah. to then attack the populace is so the wrong mm-hmm. move and it's going to strike Oh yeah, more anger in people's like you're just p- pouring the pouring gasoline petrol yeah. on the mm-hmm. fire. Like it's just going to ignite even more hatred towards the emperor. Exactly. Um, and it's really weird because like the reality of the situation was very different. I feel like in real life there was like a cooling off period mm-hmm. after the wedding. Like there was a honeymoon mm-hmm. period with the emperor. Um, but in the show it's like 
the complete opposite. It's making everything fucking mm-hmm. worse. And I get that because I need to create tension. Yeah. Um, but there was um, a general amnesty declared after um, the wedding. Like he announced it like the day after the wedding. I'm going to announce that um, like all the people that had committed Lee's Majesty and all the treasons of uh, the previous revolution. He was like, "You're fine. We're cool now." Yeah, yeah. Who, <laughs> and who, he also who gave out like with now. <laughs> I'm popular now, it's chill. <laughs> um, and, <clears throat> and he gave out like these huge sums of monies to all of the different regions is a sort of like bribing mechanism of like, see, I'm chill now. Yeah. I have a bride and I'm letting you all get away with treason. So we're cool. And <laughs> it it worked and they were like there was relative peace. Meanwhile on the show they're doing the absolute fucking opposite. They're <laughs> making everything worse. Oh man. But like with the railway, mm-hmm. um A, I love that line about the Industrial Revolution finally yeah. coming to Austria because it further justifies my whole speech in our first podcast about how underdeveloped the nation was. I was like, yes, <laughs> I knew that was going to be important. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So thank you to the writers. Yes. Um, I'm, I do think that it is very important because in, I mean, it seems kind of un, unattached to the whole revolution storyline, but I think through the railway, Franz has a plan to empower people mm-hmm. um to make them more prosperous and to prevent more revolutions from happening. Yeah. Sophie really thinks short term and Franz is thinking long term. Mm-hmm. Um it's really important and I'm annoyed at Sophie for calling it a trinket because it has the potential mm-hmm. to be the revolution that people want mm-hmm. but without bloodshed. Mm-hmm. I mean, historians always make the point about the Industrial Revolution and preventing an actual French style revolution in Britain because it had, it gave people like social mobility mm-hmm. and an avenue to prosperity that they didn't have. Yeah. And they didn't have to guillotine people's heads off. I mean, I know there's lots of problems uh, with the rapid industrialization of any nation, mm-hmm. but if you can avoid mass murders i'm always gonna advocate for that you know yeah. killing people ain't fun times <sighs> so i'm just like franz is a hundred percent right <laughs> shut up sophie oh god i think that i just keep thinking about that guy they let they just left somebody drowned in the town well and i was like yeah there was just like a head head they they were like dunking his head under water and i kept thinking they're gonna kill him and then they obviously didn't they just left him dunked in the like at least try and cover up your murder um are you just leaving this man in the well oh, i mean i hate everything themes theme i think um the dance was probably the most obvious moment where i was like this is metaphorical mm-hmm. Um, and it felt very theatrical, mm-hmm. obviously. So maybe like pageantry and performance, yeah. because I kept also thinking about the line polar bear chick had about everyone. Everyone has a role to play. Um, so I was like, yeah, okay. So this is all a performance everyone's putting on, and definitely Sophie grappling with her change of role is very important and scary um so yeah i would say that was the theme not enough birds this episode no. i only caught one bird thing. no i was i was hoping that there would be like some pigeons thrown up um <laughs> you know as they came out of the church doors and you know all of that bridey looking stuff there might have been a pigeon. You couldn't see them behind the shitty CGI, you know. Or they, well, they all flew away. They were like, ah! <laughs> Oh, God. So, favorite scenes. What were some of yours? Um, I think the, well, the, the morning after scene, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, I love the dancing scene, obviously, because it made me scared. Um, <laughs> That was that was amazing. Um, I think the it was it was like we were watching a ballet. Um, 
Yeah. And I... Unexpectedly uh-huh. as well. I was just like, well, we're doing this yeah. now? Yeah. I was like, I just thought you guys were going to come in here and, and, you know, like do a pretty little spin around the, the, the room and that kind of thing. But no, y'all came in with some uh, Martha Graham looking shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it was like, they were all period appropriate, but I thought all of the hair yes. and costume and everything was like, really scary. Yes! <laughs> like, like, they I was got like, little donuts, they look- got little donuts on their head, one had a little Dairy Queen swirl up in the front, and, you know, <laughs> it was just like, it was crazy! Re- I think, again, it's that feeling of, like, the uncanny. It was like, this should not be happening yes. right now. <laughs> And am I the only one noticing? Because everybody else is so calm. And, like, Elizabeth was slightly freaked yeah. out, but she always she always is. So, yeah. But I think, like, that Im- that was impressive. But I think um, emotionally, the scene the- where France and Elizabeth lied down together on the ground, yes. I was like, oh. this is moving me. It- because it was a callback to the f- first episode, mm-hmm. I was like... And you could tell Franz, Franz, that's his coping mechanism now. He's just like, when he's overwhelmed. Yeah. I, excuse me, down. I just got to go lie down. You know, people will think <laughs> that he's lying down in a bed. But no, you go no. into his room and you'll see him laying all up on the Persian rug. That was a beautiful rug, by the oh, way. Yeah. When I saw it, I was like, oh shit, they wealthy. Oh, well, of course they are. But yeah. you know what I mean. Um, I love that, like... She's given him a way, like a calming mechanism of him to cope with his stress as emperor, like unintentionally. Mm-hmm. She's like improving his life. I imagine that, like, over however, when they were engaged and he wasn't seeing her, he was like, okay, I'm stressed, gonna go lie down on the floor by myself for a while. <laughs> <laughs> He's dorky enough to do that. Oh my gosh, that. they are both nerds! I love, I love it. that she was like, wait, you still do this? And he's like, yes. It's like, uh-huh, I do. I do. It's it's good. You should try it again. <laughs> um, I could have used um with less Max ruining the sex scene as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he is just malevolent. You know? He's just this presence that needs to go away. He is giving psychopath. Uh, do you think that was your least favorite scene? What was your least favorite? My least favorite scene. It's really hard to come up with one. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard to come up with one. I mean, like I said, there there are a couple of scenes in the previous episodes that I was like, okay, we we don't either we 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 know about all of this and all of this exposition that you're you're throwing at us right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we got it. Let's move on. Um. Or are people are just going to go, what the hell am I drinking? <laughs> you know? Why is Franz Litz just <laughs> standing there? <laughs> I was real sad that we didn't get uh, Johann Strauss back for the waltz. Yeah. Um, he wrote the ditty. He should be able to mm-hmm. play it. Um, oh, but they had a great big it- giant crowd. Was, and was he one of the ones that, that um, they thought may have had ADHD? Um, Probably. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise that sounds me. like him. I mean, look at his... No, I'm not going to mm-hmm. say that. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Yeah. Okay. Were you going to look at his face? <laughs> no, I was going to say look at his hair. Oh. But then I'm like, I know people with ADHD who have great hair. Uh-huh. What am I talking about? Yeah. Have you seen my hair? It's never combed. Um, <laughs> what I'm really appreciating is all of the storylines are coming together at mm-hmm. first. It felt like, what does the Crimean War have to do with any of this? Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, it's definitely going to be a mitigating factor in <laughs> how Max yeah. establishes his little coup <laughs> and all of the <laughs> all of the railway shit feeds into the revolution. So it's like it these things that seemed like really minor points in the first episode are really important, and you're like, oh, they were dropping little breadcrumbs for me. And I didn't waste my time Wikipedia-ing them all. Yeah. <laughs> Which I love. Um, favorite costumes. Um, we have to talk about that wedding dress. I mean, um, the collar at the top as well. It felt like it was like maybe leaves or something. There was an element of it that felt like 
it was like this really ornate wedding dress and then a part of it still felt very like elizabethy it still has that touch of nature like if you could get puck's hair on her she'd be really happy um (laughs) just i loved that hi guys it's rita here michelle wasn't feeling very well so i sent her off to bed to get some rest um I'm sure you'll join me in sending her all the best wishes and healing vibes over this Thanksgiving. But it's up to me to finish this podcast here all by myself, so forgive me if the next few minutes gets a little awkward. Okay, so, performer of the episode. I'm going for Franz, and I think we have undersold Philip Frusant. Frusant? I apologise for messing up your name. A lot, and I was very impressed with this performance this week. I think he really killed it without saying much, especially in the scenes with his brother. Very impressive. Just an ocean of emotion. Ocean of emotion. Um, underneath that restrained German facade. We love it. Um, and finally, how many birds out of five? I would give this episode a five. I wouldn't say it was enjoyable. I really appreciate the direction they went with the female characters in particular. They're all really complicated and juicy and fleshed out. And I love that for us as viewers and for the period drama genre in general. Like, it should be about the sisterhood. Um, okay, time for a quick inbox session. Um, we got one email this week and it started with Interpretive Dance 101. The dance piece in front of the newlyweds was short and sweet. Not sure the choreography is authentic to the time, but as a storytelling device, I think it was pretty awesome. They express all the pushing and pulling that poor Elizabeth is and will be forced to endure, and I think the penny has dropped for her. When the newlyweds finally danced their waltz together, it got a whole different tempo and intensity than when they first danced alone, the whole world watching and waiting to see how this will end. I'm so happy we got to see this beautiful, shimmering wedding dress for the whole episode. The costuming in this series is seriously next level. It uses modern textures and fabrics, but wraps them up in a silhouette alluding to the actual time in history. Deserves an award, really. Uh, so many people in dark corners in this episode, Franz slash ex-lover stalker, just freaking Elizabeth out. Don't trust her one little bit. Archduchess Sophie making out with old lover Von Vasa. Embarrassing father swimming in the pond drunk as a skunk. There's always one. <laughs> Especially at weddings, right? Uh, business deals left, right and centre. Max just being a dick in general and just stalking around the throne room looking menacing and i thought it would be a lovely family wedding (laughs) by the way who do i have to speak to to have someone following me with a tray of champagne all the times a la maximilian Uh, bottom up and nightgowns off winky emoji ciao maria from australia thank you maria yeah i mean i i I could do with that champagne right now quite frankly we usually end with the next episode's description and this is episode four the title is the hunt And the description is as follows. Sophie and the council push for military action, but Franz refuses to engage. Elizabeth upsets the Tsar's son, leading to severe political consequences. Well, it's called The Hunt, so I suspect that there will be some hunting, which is fabulous because that was in the first Sissy movie. But I am not looking forward to the inevitable blaming of Elizabeth for fucking up diplomatic ties. Um... But anyway, I'm going to go watch that episode. So that's all from us this time. Uh, We'll be back next week to discuss episode four. If you have opinions and would like them to be read out in our inbox section, please email us at inthebooksnetwork at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at inthebooks. And please remember to rate and review, share the podcast with friends. Thank you. Bye-bye.